The case of the missing fundamental, second attempt. I published a YouTube video earlier on this same topic, but I used stereo speakers, and several people have complained that they can't hear the spoken word because the music is too loud. So I'm going to go do it again, except I'm going to use my laptop speakers this time. The question is, why do the spectra of the C2 on the Kanabi and Steinway, which I looked at in an earlier video too, have such a weak fundamental? Here's a picture of the two spectra that came from that earlier video. And you can see that at the basic, at the fundamental for C2, which is 65 hertz, there's extremely small contribution on both pianos. However, the harmonic structure set up based on multiples of that fundamental is in place. Now let's take a look at the C1. Here we have a fundamental of 32.7 hertz, which is down right there. And again, it's barely represented, but all the harmonics, or most of the harmonics, based on a multiple of that fundamental, are in place. Now here's a C3. We're starting to go up the scale. Now we have a much stronger representation at the fundamental of the C3, which is at 131 hertz, right in here. The second harmonic still uh, is the strongest, but there is some presence here in the fundamental. And of course, the harmonics as multiples of the fundamental are present. Here is the C4. Now we're starting to see a lot more strength at the fundamental of the C4, which is at 262 hertz. And again, you see the harmonics being set up as multiples of the fundamental. C5, which has a basic fu a fundamental of 523 hertz, which is right in here. Now, now the fundamental is the strongest of the harmonics. The harmonics as multiples of the fundamental are set up, are present, but the fundamental is the strongest. C6, the fundamental is the stronger by far now, strongest by far. And finally, not finally, but C7, showing the fundamental at 2093 hertz. Here's the second harmonic, and out here there is no third harmonic. Maybe there's a little bit of a hiccup there, but that's not much. Now let's go to C8. Now C8 is strange because it's got the fundamental here at 4186 hertz, but it's got a lot of noise coming in at the uh, distributed over the lower frequencies, especially at the real low frequencies. All right, let's go back to MATLAB and see if we can get some insight as to what's going on here. We're going to take a look at a signal that has 70 hertz, which is basically a C2 sharp. Now we're going to play it as given as interpreted by the MATLAB. I don't think you heard that. I didn't hear it. I sent a sine wave having a frequency of 70 hertz to MATLAB and it came back with that signal over these laptop speakers. You couldn't hear it. Let's go to the second harmonic. I think you could hear that. That was 140 hertz. Let's go to the third harmonic. Fourth harmonic. Fifth harmonic. Sixth harmonic. And seventh. Okay, now we're going to add all those harmonics up and we're going to add them up with each harmonic being divided by the harmonic number. For example, here is the fundamental that we played earlier. Here's the second harmonic divided by two, third harmonic divided by three, and so forth. And I'm weighting these things according to a scheme that was suggested by Arthur Benads in his textbook. 
Now let's do the same thing again, except let's just add the second through seventh harmonics, ignoring the fundamental. So you see, we get the fundamental sound, but we aren't using the fundamental. Now let's take a look at another simulation and see if we can gain some more insight yet. There was the second harmonic divided by two. Clearly not the sound of the fundamental. Now let's add the third harmonic divided by three. Okay, now what do we have going here? The black curve shows the second harmonic divided by two. The green curve shows the third harmonic divided by three. And the blue curve shows the sum. And you can see that this blue curve starts to repeat itself at 14.3 milliseconds, which turns out to be the period of the fundamental. And again over here, about 28 milliseconds, it repeats itself again. So by adding those two harmonics together, we have generated a sine wave, or a, a wave, that has a period equal to the fundamental, even though the fundamental is not present. Now we added the fourth harmonic divided by four, which is the red curve here. And then we have the sum here, which is the green. And you can see the green curve still has this repeating point here at 14.3 milliseconds. Let's add one more harmonic. Okay, that was the fifth harmonic divided by five, and that is this uh, magenta or pinkish curve here. You see they all come together and restart, reset themselves at 14.3 milliseconds. And it generates the sum curve, which is the green curve, which has a period of 14.3 milliseconds, which is that of the fundamental. Now look at the waves in summary. Here is the fundamental in blue. It has a period of 14.3 milliseconds. The green curve shows the sum of the seven harmonics, including the fundamental. And you see it comes down, it repeats itself at 14.3 again. The red curve is the sum of the second through seventh fundamentals without the, fun I'm sorry, second through seventh harmonics without the fundamental. And you see it's got a the period equal to that of the fundamental, even though it's not present. Okay. Let's go back to our summary. Okay, I'm going to read this to you. The spectral pattern of the fundamental plus its harmonics generates a signal with a basic period equal to that of the fundamental. If the fundamental harmonic is removed, the remaining harmonics still have a frequency domain spacing that generates a signal with a basic period equal to that of the missing fundamental.